everyone, Carpacoin here. I hope your week has been amazing and welcome to my new video. So today we are talking watercolor palettes, as you might have noticed from the title. So, um, you can make a watercolor palette out of most tins or even ink pads. So, this is my smaller, one of my two smaller watercolor palettes. Um, I I really like to work with weird color triads, so in here it is really strange. Uh, it is um, cobalt teal, uh, pearl and maroon, and transparent yellow, and they create very interesting mixes. I really like to, um, to do these kinds of weird palettes, so today we are not going to be talking about um, palettes for beginners, unless uh, you, as a beginner, do not want a standard watercolor selection. Because, for instance, in this one I have mostly browns and muted colors, and this dark one is um, indigo. For instance, this one has no blue, because this one is a purple, and has mostly um, warm tones or muted tones. Um, so yeah, today we are going to be doing this tin because I created another sketchbook similar to this one which I showed you last week how to do. Um, and so we are using this sketchbook and this tin together because I like how they look together. <laughs> And let me just take this out of the way. You probably can still see the ones I'm stacking out, but I don't know. Okay, this is the one I've been using the most. I know these are a lot of colors for such a small box, and I usually don't use that many colors in a, at once. But the thing is, this is the one I carry with me most of the time, and that means I can choose different either um, groups of three or four colors usually not much more than that because if you have um, a little amount of colors it is way easier to um, to make your image cohesive and yeah so here's the thing I love green but I rarely ever use green so I'm going to use this sketchbook mostly for things that are either green or that I use or that I paint as if they were being lit by green light. So these are the tins where I keep the um, the colors that are not in a proper place yet. Because I really do prefer to use small tins rather than, you know, a regular sized tin. This is my old palette, and as you can see, I took everyone off instead of, um, I instead, um, apart from, not apart, oh, I can talk today. So I took everyone out except for the Ecoline ones because these ones don't fit as well in small uh, kits like these although they do fit because of the um, the width of the... Um, I don't know if you can see... they fit but I they are really heavy because these are, you know, ceramic things I don't know <laughs> so what I do is and as you can see this is empty and what I usually do is I did swatches for every single color that I have at hand and I use a small rubber band to to tie the ones that are in each in each box so these ones are taken and then what I do is I look through the colors 
and I try to imagine how they would look um, uh, mixed with each other, you know, because I don't want to do a watercolor chart with all of these. I mean, I've done swatches, but if I'm going to mix each one of these with each one of these, it will be not only a lot of paint, but a lot of time. So, what I do is I compare, and let's leave the gold metallic things for later, I compare these colors with the colors of the of the box or of the paper because I really find it cute when you know the um, the lead of the box is you know the colors inside the box correspond to the lead and I really like that uh, Now that I've chosen all the all of the colors that are in here, I'm going to start. I'm not. Um, I don't think I'm going to. Let me just. Okay. So it is. Can you see in there? I think you can see. Um, there is a small difference between the height of the empty pan and the height of the um, tin itself um, so that means I think we can safely put in here these St. Petersburg watercolors because these are very sticky and I need these extra, this extra height otherwise they will stick to the top so let me test this with a very sticky color Yep, there's enough height. Let's see if this chromium oxide sticks to the top. We really needed to test this type of things because, okay, so it doesn't stick too much. Um, that's good. We can do this. Okay, so after you choose the colors, some people use some what is it called? Magnet strips, I think? Yes, it's a magnet strip that you can cut to size and it is self-adhesive on the other side. So, ah, no. Um, as you can see, I write on every pen, no, you can't. I write on every pen the name of the color and the pigments. Um, because that way I can, I know if something is wrong, I know what pigment it was, and I know not to uh, buy or mix certain pigments together because I, if I know if I do not know which ones are which i I don't know which ones to avoid, right? So cobalt green, I really don't like this co i I mean. I really like it in a pen, but I really don't like the way the cobalt green swatches look. I But I think it will be great for mixing. Uh, so this one is. Then all the other ones in here are St. Petersburg, so chromium oxide, em emerald. No, where is indigo? Oh, this is cobalt blue, I believe. Yes, cobalt. And cerulean. This one is probably the most sticky pen I've ever encountered. I've ever touched. 
the Saint Peter. Ooh, no, the White Knight Saint Petersburg cerulean blue is very sticky all the time. Be careful! Don't dig your finger in there. Um, more. Where is the violet? This is indigo. I really love indigo color. Pen's gray. What is this? That's green. I think this is violet. Yes. Okay, so. Hmm. I think that's everything. So, three. 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 Yes. As you can see, I could fit more colors in here, but I really don't think I need more colors in here. Um, now there's one thing I one thing I really have to do, which is separate the yellows from the blues and the greens because I really love a really good um, how do you say clean yellow, and I hate it when I when my yellows get dirty. Uh, it annoys me a lot, especially with green. I don't know why. I should be more annoyed by purple, but no, I'm very annoyed by green on my yellow watercolors. So yeah, I usually end up keeping my yellows close to my browns and really purple sometimes because I can't stand um, watercol uh, yellow watercolors contaminated by, by green. <laughs> really can't stand it. I don't know why. So that's why I tend to organize them in such weird ways. Um, so there's purple and then maybe I'm going to do something like this. And maybe I can fit my no, not yet. My my pencil in there. <laughs> maybe not. Um, maybe you know. I really like to play with the. Yeah, I can fit it right in like that. Gorgeous. Then I can have both of my yellows, and I think until I need it somewhere else. I think I'm gonna put this one too, which is New Gamboge. Um, and I really love these colors together. The New Gamboge, oh, it's one I don't have in here, but it is a slightly more opaque color than these two yellows. So what this looks like is this. Now I'm going to get go ahead and put the um, Lutak, Bostik, whatever you want to call it, in all of these, and then I'll show it, show you how it looks. Hello guys, and welcome to the voiceover. So, what you can see me doing here is a mixing chart of all the colors that I have. Um, you might have noticed that my chart, instead of a rectangle or a square, is a triangle. That is because I decided to not do both of the sides of the of the chart because I would be repeating mixes and if I, even if I get some variation in the mixes because I can put more of one color and on the other side more of the other. Um, I did not really feel like, to <laughs> like doing that and I thought maybe it would be nice to do a little silly doodle on that little on that part um, so um, what I did was I divided the page by the number of colors that I had but I I don't know how I did the math but somehow I in my head I had uh, some extra colors that I didn't have <laughs> so I have way extra squares so 
underneath the, um, the actual mixing chart I added a favorite mixes um, part and um, a space for the um, to mix the g every single color with the gold um, so yeah <laughs> so um, I am right now I think I am mixing the dioxin in violet if I'm not wrong and I found a mix that is amazing and I wish someone had told me that sooner um, when you mix dioxin in violet so PV23 with a phthalo green so PG7 it makes this beautiful beautiful dark turquoise color so beautiful um, now you can see I am quite indecisive here I am doing the favorite mixes thing that I was talking about yeah it felt it felt really good to be just choosing colors and looking at beautiful colors all day I love to record these things <laughs> so yeah if you if you want more palette videos please tell me because I love doing them so yeah Maybe one day, if I buy a new paint, which I don't expect to do soon, maybe I can do more of these just because I want it. I don't know. But I still have paints left in those boxes, so maybe one of these days I will just... Here's another watercolor palette! <laughs> I don't know. Well, I am very sleepy today. So... What am I doing right now? I think I am almost done. No, I still have to do the gold ones. Um, yeah, other colors that make beautiful, beautiful mixes is uh, Queen Acridon Gold, the the new version because I never managed to get my hands on the ol on the old version um, but Queen Acridon Gold by Winsor & Newton um, that I'm not sure of the pigment information because it has three pigments and I don't remember all of them so Queen Gold and Dioxazine Violet makes this beautiful beautiful chocolatey brown color it's so so amazing another color that looks really really good is um, transparent yellow so PV no PY 150 with basically anything I love that color and it looks good with basically everything but it looks especially good with um, indigo which is another convenience mixture, at least the one I have, because I only have Cotman Indigo. No, no, that's a lie. I have the... Um, I use the St. Petersburg one, but it's still a convenience mixture. Mixture. <laughs> Words. Okay, so now I, I, had, I had some more space, and I'm just putting in there my favorite colors that are not mixes but my favorite colors from all of them and those colors are quinacridone gold transparent yellow and i believe new gamboge yes so here is a close-up of the chart i love to look at colors like this ah. <laughs> i i'm color addicted um Ah, uh, just look at this. <laughs> okay, so let's test these colors in some weird way. Um, I did not, n I didn't know what to do. I was a little bit lost in what to paint because I really wanted to try these paints together, but I was like, I don't know what to draw. It's gonna be ho awful. So, as a way to solve that problem quickly, I decided to do. A galaxy effect because it is really easy to do and 
yeah, it is a way to test how colors look together because they end up mixing with each other and that's unavoidable. Oh, that's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> unavoidable. Great. So, because because they tend to mix and merge together and flow through the page, I thought it was a great opportunity to test them all, not all of them, but most of them together, um, and see what it looks like. Um, I am going to add a little bit of gold of the gold decline, and I will use it as stars. So the splatter you will see in a few moments. This one is from that. Now I'm going to let you listen to the peel porn part. Wow, wasn't that satisfying? I really love to take the tape off. Um, it feels so good. And here is a silly extra doodle that I decided to do on the mixing chart. I just I just did a quick, funny looking drawing of myself because I thought I have no idea what to draw. Let's just draw a silly face. <laughs> Um, obviously, I am just adapting uh, the doodle to the colors, um, uh, and I don't know how, but I think I don't have a red in this one. Uh, the quinacridone gold may look like a red from here, but it is a yellow color, um, and I was so amazed that. I was I managed to do some kind of strange skin t color that still looks like skin with just the quinacridone on gold I did not mix anything into it and I think it would look even better for dark skin tones because it mixes really well with dioxazine violet as I had said before and it makes a gorgeous a gorgeous brown that can be used for dark skin tones um, and I don't know I really like these colors I'm I really happy with the choice <laughs> of colors um, and it would be nice to have my hair blue like that <laughs> um, Oh, and that green, I don't remember the mix. I really don't remember what I used to mix, but I believe it must have some indigo in there. I'm, but I can't, I can't say which colors I used because I can't remember. Why can't I remember these things? Okay, so now I am using um, Pilot GTEC C4 which is a 0 0.4 uh, pan it is not waterproof so that's why I'm using it to... Um, I'm using it last um, I will then you probably can see right now I am going to add 
some gold because of that equine gold and I think it looks really good with these colors I'm really pleased I love to choose colors if, if, if you can notice that <laughs> I know this voiceover is all over the place I'm really sleepy I just woke up but I really wanted to get this video out today oh the colors now I am adding the gold in the word colors and in my eyes as if I was you know when the characters look at money and they're like whoa this is me with colors <laughs> so yeah um, just adding the finishing touches and I hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching um, any suggestion, anything, leave me a comment down below. And if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much. See you next week.